Hello YouTube, this is Rowan here and today I'm going to be doing an informational video of sorts, a PSA if you will, about highlighting the importance of the Titan skill melting point to you and your fire team in the Taken King. Now for those of you who don't know, melting point is a sunbreaker ability where their melee override, which is called sunstrike, ignites the target, that's its regular ability, it's kind of like scorch on the sun sooner, but what melting point does is that while that target is burning, it is weakened for both you and your allies, so your entire team does additional damage to whatever you have punched. Now unfortunately I don't have any of my own footage for the Taken King yet, so if you want to watch Sunstrike in action, go to the Planet Destiny video that I have linked in the description below. It should show you how the Sunbreaker Titan works out and also Melting Point in action. The point of this video is to highlight the similarity between it and a skill in Borderlands 2 called Deathmark, where dealing melee damage marks a target for 8 seconds. That target takes plus 20% damage from all sources. And I'm not saying this to go, uh, uh, Destiny copy Borderlands. No, I'm doing this because if you ask any endgame player in Borderlands 2, an assassin with death mark is an almost vital part of all raid teams, mainly because the damage boost the death mark applies makes such a big difference to the team at DPS towards bosses. Now, of course, there is a big difference between the two. Deathmark is clearly more powerful than Melting Point because it can be continually applied by melee attacks, it doesn't have to be a melee override attack, and it can be multiplicatively applied through the use of Kunai, making a bigger difference overall to the multipliers used against the boss. So there is of course an argument that Melting Point won't be as important as Kunai was in Raids and Destiny compared to Raids in Borderlands. I however maintain that it's still going to be quite important because even if the multipliers between Melting Point and Deathmark are very different, there's a however big difference between the games in terms of boss health with Borderlands being way more over the top than Destiny. People complain about Valus to Arc being a mountain of health, but he didn't have 3 trillion hit points like some raid bosses in Borderlands, did he? So I think the principle overall still stands and we should be looking at Melting Point to be a key part of some raid activities to do maximum damage to bosses. Additionally, Melting Point has some extra features over Deathmark, like applying a damage over time or dot to the boss to prevent shield recovery, and hits to the burning target will register as a crit for the weapon, even from uncritable weapons like fusion rifles, making current perks like White Nail, Triple Tap and Outlaw, as well as future perks like those on the Data Mind, Vestian Dynasty and Fate of All Fools much more useful against bosses. So. Hypothetically, if this is going to be as powerful as I suspect, how do we make better use of this ability? Well, the two main problems with using Melting Point consistently against a boss are firstly to have your melee override charged quickly enough so that when the burn wears off you can apply another one for more consistent damage, and secondly being able to tank enough damage to be constantly up near the boss and punching it because, you know, Titans, d arms, all that, you're going to have to be able to survive quite a few hits. So first, we need to get the charge up ASAP. There are many ways to do this, such as Strength, the perk Simmering Flames on the Sunbreaker, which will charge your melee faster when your super is full. But let's face it, there's no better way to charge your melee override than with a Monte Carlo, which is going to be one of the exotics brought forward in the Taken King, so it will be a useful weapon, so you aren't going to have to uh, reduce your effectiveness by equipping it. Hopefully if you're on PlayStation, you'll already have it, and if not, I'm sure that once it's available to all, it will be sold by Zero or something to make it more attainable. So get your hands on a Monte Carlo and that overrides the first problem completely. Now the second problem of giving yourself enough health to survive the boss at close quarters. Hopefully this won't be too bad because what we've seen bosses in the Taken King aren't going to have as many of those like proximity Nova Blasts that current bosses do which make punching them so immensely difficult. Bearing that in mind, the closer you get to your boss, you tend to take more damage anyway even if they don't have those insta-kill blasts, so let's just play it safe. At the moment, the best way I find to survive a boss is to use a Defender of Ward of Dawn with a Blessing of Light. It gives you enough health to normally tank most of what they're doing, and then when they hit you with their Nova Bomb, you're knocked back and then if you angle it so you fly back into the shield, it instantly replenishes your health by giving you a new overshield. And this is very effective for like if you're using a shotgun or something to be up and close to the boss quite consistently. So this going forward would be a good way to get you close enough to apply the melting point to the boss. This might not entirely be necessary though because the Sunbreaker has the ability to both regenerate its health 
and give itself over shields through a skill. Now of course how practical those skills will be, that's something to be determined. And if those skills aren't working out too well to support you, maybe try and convince one of your fellow Fireteam Titans that they don't have to be a Sunbreaker because it's new content and, you know, help everyone out by sticking to Defender. And hey, on the plus side, if you can survive next to the boss without external health, that Defender can get supply the team with weapons that light even further maximising their DPS, so it's a win-win scenario for a Sunbreaker-Defender combo in my eyes. But that pretty much sums it up, just a little BSA video to say, hey, Melting Point is going to be quite useful, so when you're planning your raid teams to go into the King's Fall raid, I'd recommend to have at least two Titans on there, just because this thing, it could definitely help whittle a boss's health down faster. But anyways, this has been Rowan, so I hope you find this video informative, and if you did, why not like it, comment about your own ideas for builds to go into the Taken King with skills that you've seen. Maybe you've seen something that's pretty awesome that I've missed out on because Titan Master Race blinds me. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.